So today uh, we'll be starting our discussion uh, with new topic. DNS stands for domain name system. <clears throat> so anybody has any idea about DNS? Rule number two, you said something, but uh, it was not clear. No, sir. OK, anybody else? <clears throat> so basically what happens is DNS actually stands for domain name system. Uh, in this, uh, let us say you want to uh, search something in Internet. Obviously, what you will do is you will go to google.com and uh, enter whatever you are searching for. OK, that is what we will be doing. Or let us say you want to access uh, WhatsApp. You'll be going to specific website and you will be accessing Gmail. You'll be going to specific website and accessing. But so far, whatever the discussion we had, uh, like uh, with respect to sending information from one system to other system, we were dealing either with the MAC address or IP address or worst case we were dealing with the uh, port address. OK, but when we try to search for anything in the URL, we are not giving IP address, but instead we are giving names of the system. OK, like Google.com, Facebook.com, YouTube.com. OK, so like this we are giving. So how system understands that? That is the question. OK, and uh, for example, somebody comes tomorrow and ask you to uh, remember like uh, IP address of Google.com or IP address of YouTube. Uh, is it fine for you? Like, will you be able to remember easily? No, sir. OK, it's not possible if somebody asks you to uh, remember uh, IP address instead of name to remember IP addresses, it will be really difficult. OK, even the same uh, in our mobile also, we are doing the same thing, right? We are not storing each and every person contact with uh, uh, neither rule number nor uh, mobile number, but we are storing with some name using which we will be able to identify that person easily. OK, that is what we are doing. So same is the case with uh, IP addresses also. It is not possible for us to remember the addresses so what we are doing is we are trying to give a name to that one. OK, that is called as domain name system. So what we are doing in DNS is uh, trying to map between IP address and domain name. OK, that is what we are trying to do in uh, DNS. So this is an example which talks about uh, uh, what is the service DNS is providing to us. Uh, for example, uh, you are sitting in front of a computer and trying to access uh, a website wonderful.com. OK, that's, that is what you are trying to access. So the SMTP client which is sitting in your system, it sends a message to DNS client asking for the address of wonderful.com. OK, basically this is uh, an email address. OK, your uh, let us say like at the rate gmail.com at the rate yahoo.com we say, right? So somebody is trying to use their mail. So they want to log into corresponding uh, server. OK, it can be wonderful.com. It can be Gmail. It can be Yahoo anything. OK, so basically SMTP client, since it does not know what is the IP address of uh, wonderful.com, it is asking DNS client to provide that information. OK, DNS client, in case if it has information, it will be responding to that. But if in case if it uh, doesn't have the details of that particular wonderful.com in that case it has to ask dns server okay so basically this is dns server in the textbook they have given uh, dns client but make a note of it this is dns server okay so dns client is sending information to dns server and dns server will be sending you the address ip address of the corresponding wonderful.com to dns client and dns client again it is sending back to smdb client OK, that information you are giving to transport layer, which will take care of giving the information to network layer. OK, so I was looking with respect to an IP address. I know what is the name of that one. I provided the name and 
DNS client with the help of DNS server has fetched me the corresponding IP address. Okay. Now you should be able to understand what is the role of DNS. Okay. Given name of the servers, it tries to fetch the IP address. Clear for everyone? Yes, yes, sir. 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 Yes,
we are going to have some difficulty with respect to that. They'll check whether that is valid or not, and they'll allow. Valid in the sense. Unique way, sir. We need to register a domain uh, from a domain provider. OK, let us say I go to domain provider and I'll get it. Uh, but OK, somebody says you need to host it. Uh, everything is fine. I am just talking about uh, just name uh, with respect to name. Uh, I, I, I'm discussing. It should be unique, sir. It shouldn't be already existing one. It should be OK, unique. but uh, how would I know whether it is unique or not? The provider itself, he tells the first uh, whether if he give one name, if it's already existing, he denies to take that one. OK, so this is like the question comes here. Uh, it will be like who exactly is going inside? <laughs> what is the name I take? OK, so whether I can take the decision on my own or I need to ask somebody if I can take that particular. Uh, uh, domain name. OK, that is the question we need to understand. OK, so you can see first like how we are going to give naming. That is the first thing we will be looking at. Next, we will try to understand uh, who is going to give us names. OK, is it like uh, somebody will take care of giving name or I have to take care of giving name to my website? That is what we will be discussing. OK, so the first thing is with respect to how we are giving name. Second thing is with respect to who is giving the name. OK, clear, right? What are the things we are looking at? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. So uh, I just want to cross check again with respect to audio. Is it clear or? Uh, lot of disturbance you feel. It's clear, yes, sir. sir. OK, uh, I'm asking multiple times because I just uh, started cooler over here and uh, I hear a lot of noise. Uh, I want to cross check. OK, that's fine. Uh, so when we go with namespace, basically we are talking about uh, like what are the possible names that I can consider. OK, uh, previously also we used to tell like uh, sample space, right? In sample space means what are the possible outcomes like that we used to say. Similarly here we are talking about namespace where we are talking about what are the possible names I can consider for domains. OK, so first we will consider flat namespace. Then we will look with respect to hierarchical namespace. So when I look with respect to flat namespace, this will be like sequence of just numbers will be there like A, B, C, OK, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, like that we are going to have these names. Uh, I can just write like this. OK, there can be a name like this. OK, somebody else may have name like ABCD. OK, I may be giving to somebody else like ABCDEF. Flat namespace means only one level like I can have till 64 characters. OK, that is what uh, I can consider here when we consider flat namespace. OK, so. I may be having. Uh, like for example, if I consider uh, two different domains, I may be having some common part like a uh, prefix or suffix. It may be common, but they may not have any meaning. That is with respect to flat namespace. OK, so let us say flat namespace uh, means sequence of. Different characters which we are going to consider. OK, any difficulty that we may have if I go with flat namespace. If it has no meaning, it will be difficult to understand. OK, you say like uh, because 
uh, we don't have any meaning, uh, we won't be able to understand. OK, so. Even if we feel like uh, we have some name also, we are going to have some difficulty because when it comes to flat name space, let us say like uh, how many positions I need to consider. Shall I say like I'm going to consider eight characters? Will I be able to satisfy all devices names within eight characters? <laughs> or I need to go with nine device, nine characters, ten characters. That will be the question here. OK, how many characters I want to have? Maximum we'll be having is 64, let us say. OK, in that case, if there is a domain name with uh, 64 letters, will you be able to remember that? No, no, sir. It's not possible. Then you will say if somebody comes and says like uh, I have a domain name with 64 characters, you need to remember if you want to log into my website, then you will say like better I'll remember IP address itself. Yes or no? So we need to fix like what is the issue we have with uh, flat namespace. Okay. So when I go with uh, flat namespace, as I said, uh, we are going to have issue like we may have some common parts. We may not be having some common parts and they may be lengthy sequence of just characters like that. Then we may not be able to recognize them properly and we may not be able to remember them properly. In hierarchical space, what we will be doing is we are going to divide the domain name into different types. OK. So the domain uh, differentiation, like what part we can, uh, like how we can divide is, first part we can just say like, what is the nature of organization? Whether it is business entity or educational institute, a government organization or a specific country or news channel, like that, the first, first part we can consider. Okay, so the second part can define the name of the organization. Okay, so try to, <coughs> recollect what I am saying. The first part can be nature of the organization. Second part can be name of the organization. And third part we can consider as department within the organization. And so on. We can have uh, different hierarchy levels. Okay. So when I have like that, is it possible for us to remember? When I have hierarchical yes, structure, we will be able to remember that, right? For example, uh, if I see our college address, www.genits.ac.in. India, last one, IN stands for India. So within India, I'm going to have academic institutions for which we give AC. Under that, we have name, genits. Okay, similarly, we may also find other college names also. In that again, if I want ECE, I can say like www.genits.ac.in slash ETE slash CSE slash ETM. OK, slash IT. Anything I can consider. So now the question is how we are going to give these names. So we will be having a central authority. OK, that central authority will take care of defining the type of organization and giving the name of organization. OK. So now you uh, the answer to whatever the question I asked who is going to give the name and how we are going to come up with name, right? So it will be a central authority who looks after this one. So whatever the dot in our genits dot in whatever we have our genits dot ac dot in that we have obtained from a central authority. OK. But after that, whatever I said, like slash ETM, slash ETE, or slash IT, all these things we are getting from our institute. Okay. Our institute will decide what is the extension we want to have, different departments within the organization, etc. Okay. Clear for everyone about namespace? Yes, sir. Okay. So there can be a question for two marks. Let us say describe the domain name space DNS name spacing like they can ask flat name space or a hierarchical name space, etc. Or what is the issue with 
flat namespacing why you want to go with hierarchical namespacing like that also questions can be there on the first part okay we will go to next topic so we talked about domain namespace right so you can see hierarchy here at the top the black color one represents the root server that is the root for all the servers whatever we have below that you can see different names arpa the original internet uh, community com stands for commercial organization educational institute organization advertisement company okay and a country okay like that we can have different levels below root server okay uh, just a minute okay so that is domain name space after that we have domain names and labels let us say the hierarchy is like this as uh, shown in this figure we have a root under which i have another domain edu again i have fhda okay again under that i have adc again under that challenger i have okay so challenger is the system name which is there in atc which is there in uh, one of the college fhda which is an educational institute okay you can consider like educational institute fhda then under that i have atc which stands for uh, maybe some department you can consider under that we have challenger which is the name of a particular device okay that is what we are considering here okay so here when i say domain name it will be the name from that particular position to the top position okay domain name for example let me draw here so with respect to atc the department in uh, fhda okay one of the university if i consider the uh, domain name here at this point it will be like atc.fhda.edu. that will be domain name but what is the label of this particular node that is atc what is the label of this particular node fhda what is the domain name of this particular node it is fhda.edu. okay so what i am trying to say here is domain name is all the labels separated with dot from that position to root node okay so wherever you are from that particular position you will be moving all the way till root node and consider all the labels separated with dot that is nothing but domain name and what is the name we have at a particular location that is considered to be label okay this is domain name and label then we have something called as uh, fqdn and pqdn fqdn stands for fully qualified domain name pqdn stands for partially qualified domain name fully qualified domain name means the node from where we are talking about from there till root node we are going to have complete path okay like challenger.adc.fhda.edu i have complete path here but when i go with partial qualified domain name i won't be having complete name so if you observe the first one we don't have the last dot okay so the last one whatever we have here after edu i have a dot it actually represents root server okay the label of root server is dot in case you are not specifying root server name then also i need to consider it as partially qualified domain name this cannot be considered as fully qualified domain name next you can see uh, computer science department of uh, uh, HMME, okay. Then uh, in partial qualified domain name, you can see we don't have commercial organization type dot com, okay. The last one www dot funny dot in it. Then here we have only www. We don't have the remaining part. So like that, we can see the variation between fully qualified domain name and partially qualified domain name. And you can see domains also here. Domain is the area under that particular node is considered to be domain. Okay, you can see here. For this particular node, there is a domain. Okay, for this particular node also, 
I have a domain. That is what we are showing here. Next distribution of namespace. We consider that how we are giving namespace. Here we will be looking at a hierarchy of name servers, zone, root server, primary and secondary servers. These are the things we will be uh, looking in distribution of namespace. So the first one is hierarchy of name servers. So what do we have in hierarchy of name server? As you can see, we have root server, which is communicating with ARPA server, EDU server, commercial server, and the last one, US server, let us say. Under education, again, I have different colleges, let us say, or educational institutes, FHDA.edu, BGA.edu, Megra.com, or Irvin.com. Okay, all these things are at next level. Okay, I can also have under, uh, let us say, we have uh, uh, an academic institution also here, like AC. In that one, we can say genits.ac.in. Okay, like that, you can consider hierarchy of name servers. Then you can see zone and domain. Zone and domain, they are not same. Zone is in which area I am going to have power. Zone means the area in which you are going to have, like uh, the area under your node he is considered to be domain name. And if you have authority of entire node, then zone and domain will be same. Okay, for example, if you see this particular node, this particular node, zone and domain both are same because that is a coordinating entity also. But when I consider commercial organization, the zone and domain, they are not same. Zone of the remaining two are like this only, like yellow colored one. This is domain, but zone is like this. Okay, the area in which we have shaded region, only that is the domain of .com server. Okay, remaining places it is not going to uh, access. Then we have something called as primary server and secondary server. Primary server, what it does is all information from disk file, it stores whenever there is any issue with secondary server, you are going to capture that particular information. Okay, so when secondary node downloads information from primary server, it is called as zone server. Okay, so that is about uh, namespace. Then we will see how DNS is organized in internet. Okay. So when we look at DNS in the internet, we have this classification. So as you can see, we have inverse domain, generic domain, country domain. Okay, so these are the two different things we have at next level of root node. Okay, so we will see what we can consider in these things also. When I consider generic domain, you can see aeronautical engineering, business, commercial, cooperative sector, EDU, government, infotainment, okay, entertainment, and uh, related to some uh, research experiments. Okay. All these names, all these categories will be there under root node. Okay, these are basically used for general purpose application. Okay. Then we have the explanation about what are the general uh, generic domain labels. Next we have is country domains. This you are all familiar, like what are the placements we have, etc. So see here. We said like if you go back. Under the root node, we have generic domain and also country domain. OK, in generic domain, we have seen what is the classification. That means OK, in generic domain itself, again, I am going to have different variations. Again, in country domain, we are going to have variation. Country domain, you can see Australia, France, US, Zimbabwe, like that we have different classification. Similarly, for example, the one which we have, genits.ac.in. So we will be having a node like this here. 
with IN under which I am going to have again academic institution under which I am going to have GNITs. Okay. So when I want to refer this particular node in GNITs, I'll be telling GNITs dot AC dot in dot. Okay. That is what we will be giving. So here also they are giving the same thing. Uh, they are giving an address of a system from De Anza College. Okay. And they are representing here with different levels. Okay. Is it clear? Country domain, generic domain. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Next, we have inverse domain. For example, let us say I have an IP address for which I want to know what is the domain name. Okay. In that case, I will be going with inverse domain. Okay. So you see here, basically in inverse domain, we are going to have for uh, historical purpose, the first two levels we are going to consider. Okay. That is ARPA and uh, in address. These two are mandatory things which we need to have without fail. OK, so those two things we have and below that you can see we are provided with an IP address. And if you see here the variation, OK, basically if the IP address is like this. Like pointed over here 132.34.45.121, then we are going to write like this, OK? So basically IP address will be written in reverse here. OK, so we will be taking the IP address and we will be trying to fetch what is the corresponding domain name for this one. OK, this is inverse domain. So mapping from IP address to domain. OK, both are needed. Then we have something called as DNS or domain resource records. OK, so. When we consider resource records, that is something like whatever the zone information we have, like we said, like uh, primary, primary server, secondary server, like that we will be maintaining, right? So zone will maintain some information with a server, and that is considered to be resource record. Okay, whatever the information I have with zone, that is considered to be resource record. In uh, basically in resource record, we are going to have five tuples. Uh, we are going to have domain name. What is the type of that? What is the class of that? What is the TTL value and the corresponding value of that one? OK, so basically value defines the information about that particular domain name. TTL defines the number of seconds per which information is valid. OK, and class defines the type of the network. OK, and uh, domain name as usual, you know what it means. OK. So all these things we are going to have when I go with the uh, DNS resource records. OK, we have been given with some examples over here regarding uh, DNS resource records. OK, you can also see here. OK, another example. OK, so we have seen name servers, how they are generic domain names, country domain names. OK, this is an example which we have. So name servers, basically we need to find an IP address for a given host name. OK, that is considered to be resolution. Resolution is like application is asking you to find out what is the IP address of a particular name. OK, then uh, the computer, it requests local name server to resolve. Local name server, if it has the details, it will respond. In case if it doesn't have uh, that particular information, it contacts root name server, root returns name server for a lower zone and continue down the zones until the particular server which you are looking for is obtained. OK, and this DNS protocol runs on 53 UDP port number. OK, and we are going to have cache DNS cache to store locally the information which we have used for some duration. OK, so you can consider an example like somebody is asking a query like uh, what is the IP address of robot.cs.washington.edu. The query will be sent from local to the root name server and then it is sent to edu server. Then it is sent to uw server. Again, it is sent to uwcs. From that you are getting the response to local. OK, 
So we will see how many types we can have this resolution. OK, resolution basically means mapping a name to an address or an address to a name that is called name address resolution. OK, we will be having resolver mapping names to address mapping address to names recursive resolution and caching. So in recursive resolution, what happens is, for example, I am looking for a address megrahill.com okay, or megra.com, but I don't know where to find that particular address. Okay, so in that case, what I will do is I'll ask my abo layers. I'll ask my abo layers to provide sufficient information. Okay, so you can see here what we are doing. Uh, we are sending a request to F see basically FH da.edu a client at fhda.edu wants to communicate with megrahill.com so what it does is it tries to contact the local server okay fhda.edu let us say fhda.edu doesn't know about it so it sends to nearby server edu okay and edu has also no idea so it is sending the request to root server and root server is expected to have different organization names, but it won't be able to remember individual domain names. OK, so what this root server is doing is it is forwarding the packet to uh, here dot com and again that is coming back to megra dot com. OK, like that we can consider recursive resolution, but. We also have another variation wherein we have iterative resolution. In recursive resolution, you can see the information is passing all the way till the destination and from there reply is coming. But in the case of iterative resolution, uh, the client tries to contact local server. Local server, what he says is, I don't have the address to megra.com, but what I know is, I know the address of edu whom you can ask, they might be having the information. Let us say edu also has no data to be transmitted. Then edu will inform the same thing to client and client will try to uh, contact root server okay root server will tell the address of dot com here okay so root server again it says where you need to go and contact if you want to find com dot com again that will be responding where you want to go to uh, like uh, if you want to go to megra dot com what ip address you need to use like that everybody are trying to respond to client here okay understood the difference right with uh, recursive and iterative resolution next we have dns messages we have two type of messages in dns query and response both types have same format the query message consists of header and question records the response message consists of header and question records, answer records, authoritative records, and additional records. Okay, so this is the format we have query and response. Okay, so these are some things which uh, easily we can remember also. Okay, so any doubt so far? Yes, sir. Sir, can you give example of zone and domain? See, example in the sense uh, I, I gave. Uh, where is that example? OK, uh, you can just consider like uh, Hyderabad. We have a domain name. OK, or within India, we have some domain, right? Uh, again, that can be divided into different things like academic institutions, cooperative sector, commercial organization like that. I can have division under India. So is it possible to have uh, same functionality for academic institutes and corporate sector or any other uh, thing? It's not possible. We need to have separate maintenance. So again, we will be having somebody else who will be looking after individual things. OK, there comes uh, the functionality. If I have the functionality, like whatever the domain I have and that is same as my zone, then I will have the control over complete area. Complete domain, but in the case of. Uh, uh, in some cases, the zone and domain, the area may not be same. It may be because of so many reasons, 
why we are not considering zone and domain as uh, uh, under same thing okay so basically it is something like uh, if we have division in the same domain then zone and domain will be different okay okay uh, i heard like somebody talking i don't know if they are uh, talking or not that's fine so these are the two formats we have for the messages dns messages okay so we have like query message again we have uh, reply to that okay query message you just have header question section and in uh, response you have header question section and the corresponding answer section then authoritative section additional section if you want to provide some authentication or authorization to response then we will be considering uh, all these things okay answer section authoritative section additional section like that okay so header format I can, again you can see what else we have in this okay so in header again if you see we have things like identification and flags i have and i have number of uh, question records number of answer records okay uh, then i also have number of author authoritative records number of additional records like that uh, we are going to give information uh, in the header okay but uh, it's okay uh, if you can remember these things with respect to exam fine or else you can uh, just uh, skip those things okay we have two types of records question record and resource record okay so the question records are useful with respect to uh, sending query and response and resource records basically they will have answers okay answer authoritative additional information all those things will have right uh, which are uh, uh, like response they are considered as resource records okay two type of records will be there okay then uh, we also have registrars uh, for example if you want to add new dns okay who is doing that particular uh, job so we have an entity accredited by icann okay so any idea what is this icann stands for international cooperation for naming and spacing sir so basically icann uh, it looks after uh, giving domain names and also uh, like it also looks after uh, different things in internet also uh, non profit organization uh, basically it is international corporation for assigned names and numbers we call it as okay so with the help of icann you are going to uh, uh, like uh, get some uh, dns name okay it maintains some dns database but some charges will be there for that one okay it's not like uh, simply we are going to get uh, dns name right if somebody has uh, uh, this one you may be knowing if somebody owns a domain you may be knowing uh, like uh, uh, you are going to get for some charge right so whenever somebody wants to register the organization needs to give names of its server okay and also the ip address of the server needs to be given okay for example let us say genits uh, want to get some uh, ip address okay uh, so uh, genits wants to get some uh, domain name so it will be given with a domain name and also corresponding ip address will also be given like mapping will be there right that mapping will be there and it will be maintained in uh, this register okay then dynamic domain name system ddns we call it as okay when uh, dns was designed uh, no prediction was there like uh, how many addresses are needed okay what changes we need to keep all those things were not there but uh, adding new host removing new host changing ip address okay all those things were made in the master file itself with respect to dns but 
uh, these things uh, needed a lot of uh, manual updating. OK, but if you consider the size of Internet today, uh, which is very, very big, uh, doing everything manually, it is going to be very, very difficult. So what they did is they thought of going with dynamic uh, domain name system okay, uh, to handle this DNS master file. In DDNS, what happens is whenever uh, there is a binding between name and address, the information uh, basically DHCP will be there, which uh, like basically this will be done by DHCP uh, and that information will be sent to primary DNS server. OK, and this primary DNS server will uh, store that particular information and whenever uh, we have some update. OK, the primary server updates the zone about that thing and secondary server also notified about uh, the same changes and secondary server. Why we are using is in case the primary servers has some issue, then uh, secondary server will come into picture. OK, it is something like uh, a zone transfer will be there from primary server to secondary server. The information transfer we call it as zone transfer. OK, in uh, failure of primary server, secondary server will taking care of the responsibilities of primary server. Overall dynamic domain name system is whatever the things DNS was handling manually earlier, a database and all that is being done dynamically. OK, automatically. OK. So that is about DNS and uh, how we are sending DNS messages. Uh, we can use either UDP or uh, TCP for this one. OK, and uh, the well known port for this one is 53 and uh, we have to make sure like. Uh, 512 byte limitation we need to follow. OK, uh, UDP is used when the size of response message is less than 512 bytes because most UDP packets have 512 packet size limit. I cannot say like uh, I'm going to send 10,000 bytes of message and I'm using UDP because UDP. The basic uh, reason is very short answer like query uh, query you have and a response is going to be there for that one. Very short request response kind of messages only for those things we are going to use UDP. Whenever we have something a response which is greater than 512 bytes, then we will have to go with uh, TCP. We cannot go with UDP because it does not provide us reliable service. OK. So is it clear?